Well, the Unified Patent Court, or UPC uh, as it's more easily referred to, is a brand new court uh, for most of the European Union, for 25 EU states. It's not like the existing Court of Justice in that it doesn't just hear appeals, it also hears trials. So patent disputes in Europe when this court is set up uh, will be heard for the whole of Europe in one court. The unitary patent is part of the new uh, European patent package that will come in at the same time as the UPC and the unitary patent is a single patent right unlike the existing national patent rights that we have at the moment. This is one single right that will again cover most of the European Union countries and it will be possible to litigate this patent, either to enforce it or, or to try to revoke it in the UPC. So the unitary patent and the UPC together effectively introduce a new borderless system of patent protection and for dealing with patent disputes in Europe. So what will happen to the existing system when, these, uh, when this new package comes into force? The existing system will, it is often forgotten, will continue to exist. So national patents, which it's possible to get at the moment, um, although they're less popular uh, than the European patent equivalent, uh, will continue to exist. They will defend national territories. If disputes break out about those patents, they will be heard in national courts. That, nothing will change. Where it gets more complicated is that the European patents, which are effectively bundles of, of, of national rights, it will be possible to litigate those in both the national courts um, and or the UPC. So all of this existing system will continue side by side with the unitary patent and the UPC system. To some extent, patent owners um, and those who compete with them in those markets can choose between the UPC or the national courts. Certainly for the first seven years, there will be a transition period to help bed down, if you like, this new UPC and unitary patent system. Proprietors will be able to enforce, choose to enforce in either the national courts or the UPC, um, but the quid pro quo, if you like, of that is that those who would want to revoke a patent because it blocks their own commercial activities can also revoke in the national courts or the UPC. And this all has, which they choose, all has various tactical advantages or disadvantages for the other party. So there is some choice, um, but the choice may be taken out of your hands by a third party. The court is European-wide. It has a central division in, based in London, Paris and Munich, and which division hears a case depends on the subject matter of the case. But there are also regional and local divisions spread around Europe. We don't know where they're all going to be yet. We don't know who's going to join together in a regional division. We don't know exactly who is going to have their own local division. Um, so disputes will, to a certain extent, still be heard regionally. Um, but there's opportunity for them to move to those central divisions that I spoke about. And all of this means that there will be different languages in operation, different legal teams in different places may be necessary, but it is all, at the end of the day, one single court. I think the key impacts of the UPC and indeed the unitary patent that users need to be aware of are the potential to enforce a patent using the UPC in the whole of Europe. A decision of the UPC affects the whole of uh, all the 25 countries that are signed up to it. Um, so that's a very, very powerful enforcement decision, be it an injunction or an award for damages. 
or otherwise. Again, the flip side of that is that a patent in the UPC can be revoked across all of those countries at the same time. And so whilst a patent proprietor has this power on the one hand, they also at the same time have this risk that their patent could be lost if it's weak, could be lost across Europe. Um, and that's a real consideration for patentees to have in mind when they're considering this choice that I mentioned before between the national courts and the UPC. The national courts don't have that same pan-European power. So it's important to remember that there's an opt-out uh, in the UPC system. This operates for the first seven years of the UPC's existence and enables uh, the owner of a European patent, not a national patent or a unitary patent, just a European patent, to opt it out of the UPC system so that litigation happens in the national court alone. But there is some debate about whether actually the UPC still has jurisdiction for opted out patents. The prevailing view seems to be that it doesn't, but it's still subject to some doubt.